Hello everyone, welcome back to I Say Cousin. Today we're continuing with Darkness Within in Pursuit of Loth Nolder. We have discovered quite a few stories so far. And now we're about to tackle this room and try and figure out what we need to do to uncover this mystery. Alright, we have nothing there. Have a look at these. A carved wooden mask, one of many displayed here. Evidently, Mr. Field had no interest in these. Is that right? Oh, that's right, we have a key. Oh, and rope. These look very threatening. Very old books. Volumes of forgotten lore. There are a lot of different masks here, and I think they are African. Oh. All the creaks and the wind and everything has got me a little on edge, actually. Let's have a look here. A desk calendar on which some dates have been marked. Okay. The note is about a manuscript, an indication of the strange interest Mr. Field had. Yeah, see that kind of noise is a little unnecessary. I don't need to hear that. It's already spooky enough. This large library contains books whose subject matter ranges from magic and the occult to geography and history. The majority of them are very old and difficult to obtain. I don't doubt it. This guy had some interesting well he had some interesting interests star but alright I think we have to put something in there is that the idol that he found that seemed to open on its own Oh, hello. These notes describe the recordings that Mr. Field made. Aha! Well, this is going to be difficult. In my teenage years, it was only. In my teenage years, it was my only joy to examine and roam through places where rumors had been spread. Human lifestyle was not for me. I always searched for the ways of the inhuman. I visited old cemeteries full of the dread, old ruined buildings, and spent most of my time in these places, which were suffused with the black veil of myths and rumors. One day I bought a sound recorder and started to record the environmental sounds of these desolate places where I had been spending my time alone. Fairly soon I had a large collection of these recordings. Some nights when I couldn't sleep, I used to put my headphones on and listen to those sounds which seemingly did not belong to this world. When carefully heated, the sounds almost materialized to be touched. Genius loci could be heard. When my secret treasure trove was discovered by my family, because Jonathan blabbed about it, all my recordings were destroyed. They forced me to go to a psychologist for one year. I can still remember how Jonathan used to call me ghoul around that time. Anyway, against all odds, I never abandoned this. I think I can say passion. Men never abandon the things that are bound up in their hearts. 
even if they are suppressed, they never forget. When I was just 22 years old, Jonathan and I became solely responsible for my father's company. I had no time whatsoever for anything else but work. I was so happy when I took over the company from my father. I will never forget that period of my life. Today, I bought myself a new tape recorder. As I said earlier, I would never abandon my passion. I can now pursue my interests in a serious and mature way without the recklessness of youth. Cassette number one. Record, record number one. Record number one and two. Old and now unused Moorland Cemetery, Brankston. Brankston is a small old town which was established 18 miles northwest of the city centre of Wellsmouth. The farms which are situated whilst going to the north are as old as the town itself. There are stories which have been told for a long time about a tomb in an old and now unused cemetery called Moorland Cemetery that is situated right in that old part of Brankston. It is said that some nights, strange noises and indescribable disgusting smells come from within that tomb. Some people who use the rough pathway, which passes 150 metres west of the Moorland Cemetery, relate that they saw some torturously twisted silhouettes and heard some howling, screaming and squeaking sounds that they couldn't identify. I started my recordings here at about 2.48am. It was so dark and overcast that it was almost impossible to see the surroundings. I used a small flashlight, but I had to be very cautious because of the rumours about some grave robbers who plundered the old graves by spreading all the bones around in a disgusting, inhuman manner. The metallic half-open door of the notorious tomb had some figures and half-reliefs similar to Rodin's The Gates of Hell. It was rusted and started to crumble away. The effect of the passing years, the spacious interior smelled really awful. The cover of the stone tomb was broken and the interior was visible through an opening. The floor of the tomb had collapsed into a wide underground hole. I heard that during a strong earthquake four years ago, some parts of Brankston collapsed into underground holes or caves. I think the same earthquake was the reason for the collapse of that tomb. I recorded both the interior of the tomb and the building surrounding it. Record number three. In a cave near the Northwood Forest. The whereabouts of this cave, which is located three miles away from the notorious Northwood Forest, is not widely known. It is connected to some other caves that form a complex underground network. It is rumored that a lot of people have become lost inside and never returned. Some people claim that they have seen fires inside and heard some sinister sounds coming from the depths of the cave at night. Record number four. By the dig in my cellar. Some sounds are coming from the well in my cellar. I don't know what lies beneath it or the reason for its construction. From the top of the well, I used a flashlight to examine the well, but it was too deep for me to see the bottom. The sounds coming from below make me think that there are some animals down there. I believe that it must be... I believe that it must connect to a tunnel that leads outside somewhere. It's rats in the walls, rats in the walls. You need a cat to chase them. Record number five in my bedroom. Uh, uh, okay, we were just up there. For some time, I've been woken up by squeaking, trembling and slight wind sounds whose source I can't identify. Several times, hardly suppressing my fear, I've roamed the house but couldn't find anything out of the ordinary. It's said that in houses this old, these noises are common. I guess I just have to get used to it. There's rats in your walls, and they're not rats. Record number six and seven, in the well. I decided to examine the well because the workers I hired for restoration left the job half done due to some sounds they claimed to hear from within the well. The rusty ladder that I hadn't dared brave before was my only avenue. I bought a strong flashlight to inspect the interior. I decided to record some sounds down there, but I could only record some sounds in the room that the tunnel leads to. 
When I listened to the recordings later on, I noticed some defects. There were some deep noises and rumblings on every recording. I think that the dirty and choking atmosphere of the well caused my recorder to malfunction. Record number 8 to 10. In Ivor's place. I had an opportunity to make some recordings in the worm-eaten place which Ivor and some other friends of his are using as a meeting place. When I told Ivor that I wanted to make some recordings, he preempted me with a strange disturbing smile on his face by saying that he was sure that I would succeed in making great recordings. That building, which seemed so strangely strong while showing the signs of rottenness all over, made me feel very uneasy. Christopher T. Dredden, one of the three men in that meeting, apart from Ivor and me, told me that this place was built by an unknown witch. I couldn't be sure as to whether he was being serious due to the sardonic smile perpetually on his wizened, thinned, long and pale face whilst he spoke to me. Whoa. This guy's got rats in his walls, I'm telling you. And they're not rats. Let's see if we can figure this out. Where are my clues? Hmm, someone named Christopher T. Dredden was also with Mr. Field and Ivor during the meeting. Ah, oh, hidden clue. Here we go. Mr. Field's life changed when he took over his father's company at the age of 22. These notes pertain to cassette number one. Ah, oh, there we go. Got them all, eventually. That took a very long time. Oh boy. And then we'll travel over here. The showcase is empty. I wonder what strange things were displayed here. Hmm. I don't. What kind of number would a forgetful person like Mr. Field use as a password? Okay, I spent some time searching for the clue for this thing, but I couldn't find it. I'm hoping I can come back later. Anyway, I think that'll do it for this installment. Stay tuned, uh, I say Cosm, for more Cosmic Horror video games. Thanks for watching.